If you are a lifelong Chicagoan of a certain age, you probably remember radio commercials for Great Lakes Dragaway in Union Grove, Wisconsin. Well, last week we paid a visit to the legendary track on the night when they tried to entice illegal street racers to come and race at the track legally. Here's Jay Shevsky. The idea for this story came one afternoon when I went to pick up my car from my mechanic, Pete. As Pete was finishing with the last customer, I noticed some guys were working on their own cars. It was clear these were guys who loved their cars, serious hot rods into which they cram as much horsepower as possible. That's because they race them. Pete's been racing since he was 16 and bought his first car without telling his parents. Did you race on the street? Pretty much back then, yeah, that's what it was. Your first you started squealing the tires, racing the people at the lights, and then, yeah, eventually got to where we were street racing. They knew it was illegal, he says, but in those days, the cops wouldn't usually arrest you. They would just come on and turn the fire hydrants on and wet down the street where we couldn't race no more. And then we just moved on to another spot. Where do you race now? Uh-huh, at the track. The track he's talking about is Great Lakes Dragaway in Union Grove, Wisconsin. I'd never been there, but Great Lakes is like a mythical place from my child. Great Lakes Dragaway, Union Grove, Wisconsin. The greatest spectacle in drag racing. Yep. The radio commercials were everywhere. Great Lakes has been around since 1955. They say it's the oldest continuously operating drag strip in the country, which probably means in the world. Most nights, if you're looking for the owner, you'll find him tending bar. Randy Henning bought the business in 1995, but he's been racing here since 1964 when he was 16. I had a 1952 Chevy two-door, six-cylinder, three on the tree, horsehair seats, the windows rolled down. A drag strip is basically just a place for two cars or motorcycles to race for a quarter mile. Most of the time, they first do what they call a burnout, which melts the tires a little and gives them more traction. A lot of times, people will wait in line to drive the track alone, just to test and tune their cars and driving skills. For $40, you can drive this quarter mile as many times as you want. And after the run, they'll give you a printout of your times. Now, there are bigger drag strips, like this one in Florida, where tens of thousands of people come to watch professional drivers race million-dollar cars. And the winners can take home thousands of dollars. Most of the time at Great Lakes, the only winnings and losses are from side bets. Randy says it's a drag strip for the rest of us. Because I want as many people to drive down the racetrack as I can possibly get to try it. Why is that? It's good business. Well, it's good business, but I like it. It's my passion to go fast. What I want to do is have the people have the ability to go out there and generate their own high. You go fast, adrenaline, you get excited, you get goosebumps. I got goosebumps talking about it right now. They say that any night the track is open, anyone can come and race in just about any kind of vehicle. But it was about 10, 12 years ago that they started opening up the track on certain nights, specifically to bring in racers off the streets, illegal racers, so they could race here. They call it real street drags. I don't want the people to get killed going fast down a side street in a shopping center or an industrial park, drive over a kid on a tricycle or a kid that runs out to get his ball and they get run over. That's not what I want. All right, here we go. Joey Atrim getting ready to make a solo pass. Brian Mitchell is the guy who started Real Street Drags and runs it for Great Lakes Dragway. And he knows street racing. He did it for about 10 years. There he goes. Wax the throttle takes off. He's shaking and baking all the way out to the 330. But he says it's not just a passion for going fast, it's also about big egos. Nice and straight. And from the big egos comes a, a race, and out of the race, uh, if somebody wins or loses, out of that they want to retry it, and then when they want to retry it, well then they want to throw a few dollars on it to make it interesting, and so that's how it goes. What finally got Brian to stop racing on the street? First, his fiancée threatened to leave him. Then he nearly killed a child. I didn't see him, he didn't see me, and uh, it could have been a bad situation if it weren't for uh, the intervention of one of the other spectators yanking him out of the way. Why, what could have happened? I could have run him over, killed him, been standing in a courtroom looking at his parents and saying, gee, I'm really sorry I killed your son because I'm an idiot. On weeknights, drivers start showing up in the late afternoon. 
Some bring regular streetcars just faster. Others wouldn't be allowed on the street at any speed. And everyone, as you might expect, says they are opposed to street racing. Do you ever race on the street? I uh, used to, not anymore, I'm retired. Do you race on the street ever? No, 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 I don't believe in that. Do you ever race on the street? Never. <laughs> then my reformed street racer mechanic shows up. So Pete, this is not a cheap hobby you've got here. No, no. Give me an idea of how much money you've got in I this car. I would say I have probably about $80,000 in this car. What does your wife think of that? Uh, she's got an idea, but she don't know the exact figures. Yeah, so. well, what are you hoping for tonight? What would be a good night for you? A straight run down the track <laughs> and a safe one. Yeah, all right. Uh, hopefully I can break the nines tonight. Now that it cooled off a little bit. Um, kind Wait, of break the nines means? Nine second quarter mile. And that means about 150 miles an hour. But you have to understand, this isn't like swimming or running where times are all public. Most street racers keep their times to themselves. Wait, wait, why don't they want to have their times let out? If, if you have a car, and, and some of these guys do some gambling, they do some betting, uh, uh, we don't get involved with it, we don't condone it, we, obviously that part of it's illegal too, but we know that it goes on, just like the government knows that people bet on football games and basketball games. And because of that, if somebody knows what the other person runs, that gives them an advantage to mess with them. That's Pete in his 2001 Camaro. In this race, he's giving his opponent a 10 car length advantage. That's a street racing tradition that's not normally done at drag strips. Looks like his opponent needed more than 10 car lengths. So why did you give him 10 car lengths? I don't explain that. Uh, his car was a lot slower than mine, and we bet for 100 bucks. And uh, well, you won. Yeah, we're taking the crew out to dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah. Magnum PI coming up in the left lane, getting ready to do a solo pass. Magnum with a pretty good straight shot this time. No wiggle, no jiggle. Takes it all the way up to the 1,000-foot mark. Gets up to the top end, and boom, shakalaka takes the win. So there's a little bit of showmanship in this whole thing, too, right? This is, there's a lot of showmanship to this. Yeah. It's uh. It's kind of like uh, wrestling with the steering wheel. Even though it's not on the street, driving 150 miles an hour can be dangerous. Great Lakes says the track has all the state-of-the-art safety features and there are always two EMTs on duty for emergencies. It happens, but it's very, very rare. You're safer going down the racetrack at Great Lakes Dragway than you are going down to Kennedy. I don't think I'm likely to become a regular at Great Lakes Dragway anytime soon, but I have to admit, I do enjoy driving fast. For Chicago tonight, this is Jay Shevsky. <laughs> well, you may be surprised to learn that Jay didn't quite break the nines in that run. He says he would have, but he just didn't want to overstress the company van, which may never be the same again. You can find out more about Great Lakes Dragway and their Real Street Drags program at WTTW.com slash Chicago Tonight. And after the break.